Hello everyone. In this short video, I just want to show you something that might be very important and useful in SOLIDWORKS simulations. So here I have an I-beam and uh, there are two types of loads on this I-beam. One of them is a mechanical load. So here I fixed both sides and then I applied some uh, distributed load on the top surface. And I can look at the stress of that. You see, so here it's like uh, 10 to the 6. And so if I want to get safety factor, uh, right click on the results, say de this, uh, define safety factor, and then I can choose uh, the stress to be calculated based on uh, any of these methods, or I let SOLIDWORKS to decide. And I look at my safety factor and say, oh, look, all my safety factors are good. The minimum is uh, like 23. The maximum is more than 5,000. So I'm totally safe and everything. But as I said, there is a secondary load that exists, and that is a thermal load. And the distribution of temperature and everything is like this. So here I have a fixed temperature on this end. Okay, so you see I have applied that, and that is 300 Fahrenheit. The other end, it's uh, insulated, so I have a heat flux with zero uh, watts per uh, basically meter squared. And then I have a convention to free air all around the beam. And you see the coefficient is 10, and the temperature is, uh, I guess, 27 degrees Celsius or uh, 300 Fahrenheit, okay, the regular air temperature. So I have these two combined, and you know, because the system is fixed, when you apply this temperature, there will be extra mechanical stress on the physical system, okay, because it is constrained on both ends. So you have to combine these two. You have combined thermal and mechanical load. How would you combine these two? Well, you might be tempted to say, I'll do all of it in the statics. Because in statics, if I go under load, I have temperature. And so I should be able to apply the temperature on the surface. That's true. You can do that. But what about the convection all around it? And what about the insulation at this end? Do you have them as well in the statics? And you see, they don't. Here, you don't have heat convection, you don't have radiation, if you have radiation, and you don't have heat flux or heat source or anything, heat sink. You don't have those, okay? And you cannot copy, you might say, I copy my thermal result into static. So I right-click here and say copy study, and then I copy it into static one, okay? Can I do that? Can I say static one? If you try to do that, you see it doesn't let you. It says it's already defined. Guess what? You cannot copy it into that. If it was a nonlinear analysis, you can copy statics into it. But uh, a thermal copying into statics is not possible. And as I showed you, in static, you don't have those options for convection, irradiation, and so on. So what is the solution? The solution is this. You come under this load, but you have two uh, extra things here that you can use. One of them is called flow effect. The other one is called thermal effect. So if you had flow analysis around this object, or you have thermal analysis on this object, you can add the results of those to this study. You can add them under this external load. Okay, you see the external load right now is force. But if you want, you can come and add what? Thermal effects. And say, get what? Guess the temperatures, get the temperatures from steady thermal one. So you see, now you can copy the temperature results from steady one, temperature one, and now you see the therm temperatures from steady one, this temp ther thermal steady one, are now copied into this statics. And now if I run it again, you see now my stresses are going to be bigger and my safety factors are going to drop. Okay, so uh, let me show you that. There we go now. Remember the stress levels were 10 to the 6, now look, they are 10 to the 8. Remember, safety factor minimum was 23. Now look at it. It's what? It's 0.26. You see? So it's not safe. In this area where we have high temperature and high, uh, thermal, um, thermally induced mechanical stress, as well as a ton of mechanical stress, in these areas, the beam is going to fail. You see? So I brought it in here, and I could use both results together. And if you did flu analysis also, and that flu might apply some uh, force onto this beam, let's say 
you are targeting this beam with uh, some water jet or anything else with uh, some uh, fluid of flu or uh, there is a static uh, fluid on it or anything you can also right click and bring those flow effects too if you have any fluid analysis so that is how you can combine and combine these results and have a more reliable thing hopefully the video was useful to you i'll see you in the next lecture thank you